Hey guys, Veronica here. So for those of you that are just tuning in, I am standing in the field in Texas um, that is covered in cover crops that we sowed, I think at the beginning of October, it was the first round, which is the larger green patch you see behind me here. And then towards the end of October was the second round. Now you can tell that there's a lot more green here than there is um, pretty much in any of the other areas where we did not sow seeds. That's very intentional because all of these seeds were again selected as a blend to be kind of our winter carryover to spring cover crop situation. Um, they have not been particularly irrigated over the last few months and we're going to kind of like go around and see what's growing and um, what fun sort of things we have to play with as well as look and see um, just you know what's going on here. So we're back in Texas and I figured give you a quick update while I'm here so let's check it out um, if you would like to follow me over here so the crops that we sowed back in the end of October which would be sort of this swath that's a little bit shorter you can see um, some winter rye that's coming up maybe some of the wheat as well as favas there's uh, some garbanzo beans <laughs> there's um, some winter, these Austrian winter peas, I can show you actually a little closer. And you'll notice that we do have a variety of leguminous plants to do some level of nitrogen fixing. So you can tell basically, based on the way that the leaves grow, that these are all legumes. Um, and then grasses and grains as well, just to keep uh, that nitrogen that's cycling in the soil. What we're trying to do again is build really healthy diverse soil biomass by feeding our indigenous microorganisms in the soil the right sort of root exudates so that they can then process the nutrients in the soil to deliver to our plants when we plant the next round of crops. Now if we want to go over to the ones that we planted back at the beginning of October there was a little patch that survived um, sort of a last minute heat wave there at the end of the fall. And you'll notice there's a lot more brassicas in this space. Uh, they just got a better head start. And so they really needed that time um, when they still had warmer temperatures and warmer soil to, I guess, start developing before we got into this frosty space. And it's funny because so we got snow this morning. I wasn't sure I'd be able to come out here and show you but it's melted down by the afternoon, which is fantastic because not everything is frozen solid and that was my biggest concern. Um, in this brassica patch, there's a mix of different turnips and radishes and um, there's some collards and I can just pull a few out here so that we can look at the size of the roots and see you know, how they're doing so far, how we're progressing. I was kind of marveling at them earlier, just looking and so you'll see there's ones like these tillage radishes. They look very much like a daikon. <laughs> They're definitely related to daikons. But so we get these big um, sort of thick roots in the soil that are digging down and helping to break up that compacted clay that we're working with here. And also, as this root begins to rot in the springtime, if they're not all removed, then that will also feed a lot of the microbial life in the soil. Um, brassicas and mustards especially are great if you have nematode issues because they help to sort of fumigate. They're like a biofumigant in the soil um, to help you get rid of those sorts of issues of biological pest control without having to spray, you know, some sort of pesticide or otherwise. We're going to see what other uh, roots that we have in here. I know that there's some turnips. I'm going to find I'm going to find a good one. I pulled one out this morning. Um, but I want to see, kind of looking to try and not smash everything, but also find a pretty solid ratio of various types of crops. Now I can't find any turnips. That wasn't the only one. Oh, there's one. Is that, or is that another radish? I think that's a turnip. I wanted to find another nice round one though. Let's see. I'm just going to mush through all of these guys. But we're definitely getting some really well broken up soil that is covered nicely. It was great to see 
Um, oh, this is a really nice, you can come in for a close up here. This is a great looking mustard. See, like just all of these leaves. So these plants have been going for, like I said, since the beginning of October. So that's what, like two and a half months or so. Um, no fuss, no, not too much additional irrigation other than during that heat wave. And we're getting some nice um, soil coverage as well as, again, some edible crops for us or for livestock or however you want to split that up. I don't recommend harvesting everything just because um, then you won't have anything feeding your soil. <laughs> but if you want to harvest some here and there, it's a nice way to get some greens and veggies in. Um, there's a nice turnip, so you can see this one has a little more purple on it. And again, it's just getting that diversity. Like we had a diversity of legumes plants with the, you know, the peas and the fava beans and the um, chickpeas. And again, we have a diversity of brassicas with the radishes and the turnips and the mustards. And so it's just getting that sort of like various coverage to try and cover as many bases as possible. A diversity of plants above ground equals a, diverse, a diversity of microbial life below ground. And so I'm pretty happy so far with how this is turning out. It's frozen a couple of times. It survived a few heat waves. Um, for first season sort of uh, soil remediation without doing a whole lot of like microscopy or tons of soil testing, I think that it's doing really well. You'll see here that we have some um, greatest hits popping up in the form of frilly mustards, one of my favorites. There's a couple of other, I see greens and stuff as far as volunteer plants. I'm sure we're gonna see tons of like um, Tulsi and some of the flowers and whatnot that were put out here and left, let to go to seed last season, kind of popping up throughout uh, the next season. So yeah, it's really exciting. If you take a look at the soil here too, um, we're gonna find a little patch that we can dig in and it's like freezing cold but I'm gonna see if I can't get well let's do this actually we're gonna pull we'll just pull one of these little plants and so the other thing I'm doing when I go to look for um, sort of like what's the impact so far and I don't really want to smash a whole lot but is really looking you know at how these roots are developing the turnip I pulled earlier had a lot of really fine additional root hairs um, along the main root, which is what I want. And I was hoping this one would, and it does. So you'll see that there's like all of these additional sort of feeder root hairs coming out now of this main stem, but it also has a really well-developed and well-defined um, main root. So that's the sort of stuff I'm looking for. <laughs> like, uh, there's a lot more to it. We're going to dive really deep into, um, sort of what we're looking for and the science behind why we're looking for these things as we move forward. But I just wanted to give you guys an update in this space because I had been asked for some updates. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, ding that bell. Do not miss a single episode because we are going to be digging into and plowing forward um not literally because we're it's a no-till situation here <laughs> but we're definitely going to be digging into soil science a lot lot more and we're going to be learning a whole lot as we move through the season and follow me on instagram at flavor kit for all this sort of stuff and more and until next time happy gardening they were garbanzo beans and they're probably lentils beans what are you doing beans <laughs> why do you give me that beans? she's an internet favorite because she can open doors